Um, my name is Chris Kerbick. I'm the first selectman here at Windsor Locks. And uh, how I'd like to proceed, I'll leave that open for a second. We'll show them if we need to. But, um, how I'd like to proceed is um, uh, at this first stage, you know, obviously there was a, I received a number of complaints uh, uh, Sunday and Monday regarding an event that took place at the, uh, at the travel lodge. I wanted to get, get to the bottom of it, and I also wanted to hear from members of the public who might have some information that, you know, that I'm not aware of. So what we're going to do is, after we introduce who's who here, um, we're going to hear from members of the public and representatives of the hotel as to their, you know, maybe their observations as to what they observed and what they're concerned about. Um, and then once we go through that process, then I'm going to request that the members of the public step out so that the, uh, the public officials who are here um, can talk about you know, whether or not uh, they believe there's any action that um, has or should take place, whether there are any, any um, uh, whether there are uh, laws, uh, regulations, uh, zoning, uh, zoning ordinances, you know, violated, and whether any, any further action should be taken. I will say now, for, for that stage of the process, um, I will also uh, step out when the members of the public do, because you know, I'm really not, except in limited cases, actually, we and I discussed last night, um, an enforcement official. And decisions of whether or not laws or regulations uh, should be enforced uh, really are, are, should be made by the public official who is charged with the enforcement of those laws. I don't want to put myself in a position where, you know, people are asking my opinion is should we enforce or should we not enforce? <coughs> That's really not a, a, a good position for a first selection or any CEO to put themselves in. Um, but uh, but I will ask that uh, that I be briefed after decisions are made, either by each individual department or by uh, uh, collectively, you know, what action they they, um, they plan to take, if any. So uh, with that, what I'll do is I'll kind of go around the table and ask each person to introduce themselves at the table uh, as to who they are and uh, what their position is. And then um, there's a sign-up sheet passing around for any members of the public. Um, uh, and it's, it's certainly, if you plan to speak, um, I'd like to get your, your contact information on there. So Mark, we'll start with you. I'm Mark Duty. I'm the Windsor Locks building official. You're also the zoning enforcement officer, right? That's one of your, one of your as, as titles. part of the charter, yes. Paul Sherniak, Police Lieutenant, Windsor Locks. I was also in charge of the police contingent that night. John Donahue, Deputy Fire Marshal. And, uh, me, Patrice Sulek, Director of Health for the North Central District Health Department. Brian Nagel, Sanitary Division of Central District Health Department. Also will be joining us at some point is Jen Rodriguez, who's our Director of Planning and Development. I think she's hung up on our phone call, but she'll be in just as soon as she has a, has a uh, opportunity. So at this point, I'll just sort of open it up in no particular order, but any members of the public who would like to you know, talk about what they observed on uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and what their concerns were. Anyone who wants to go? No, I guess I'll All right, I knew Gail, you'd be more than happy to. Gail Stagman, 308 South Center Street. Um, I had to come home at one o'clock in the morning um, alone. So, I, granted, I was quite frightened. I came over the bridge, which was 91, headed down South Center Street. I saw police car lights and cars, and lots of cars. And I looked at the hotel, and the hotel was filled. Going up Oak Ridge, both sides were filled. I noticed Ads was filled, the Smith Brothers was filled, Landry's was filled, and there were cars on both sides of the road. Now, can we just maybe just where you live in relation to that? Oh, I live at 308 South Center, which is, well, it's just beyond Linsau, um, going towards the center of town. <coughs> so I, I live... Well, two fences a lot. Yeah, thank you. So anyway, I was trying to figure feet. Um, anyway, it's illegal to park on South Center Street. And the only reason I know you can't park on South Center is a few years ago I was having Easter, I didn't have enough parking in my driveway, and I had three of my relatives park on the street. I got a knock on the door, a police officer, and I have total respect for the police department, said to me, they have to move, it's against the water park, 
and um, or they'd be ticketed and towed. But apparently, Saturday night, it was okay, or even Sunday morning, it was okay. Coming down the street, as I was trying to get through, there were people on the street walking. There was people on bikes with backpacks, which really scared me more than anything, was that why backpacks, why bikes on the street? Then I got in my house, set my alarm, and I hear boom, 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 all, seemed like all night. It was till three, I finally fell asleep around three o'clock. Um, my house is quite a distance. <coughs> if I could hear that, I didn't hear the actual music, all I heard was the bass. If I can hear that, and my windows are rattling, and I had my television on, I'm sure that there were several people that heard it. This has happened before. I was told that the police department can't do a darn thing about it, so I'm like, three o'clock in the morning, who am I gonna call? You know, who do I call? You know, if the police can't do anything, and they were there, I saw two cruisers. I don't know if there were more, but I did see um, that there were police officers there. And if they can't do anything about it, and I can't imagine that they could do anything about it because the town of Windsor Rocks doesn't have enough police officers to handle something that large. Um, guesstimation, 400, maybe 500 cars, I'm guessing, because if it overflowed, it was way over capacity, I am certain. And it was scary, I'm sca I was scared for myself, and I was also thinking about the officers that were there, I was scared for the officers that were there. So, anyway, that's, that's my, oh, and the next morning, I called my neighbor that lives across the street, and I asked her, did you hear the noise last night? She said, well, I heard gunshots at 8.30, and then this boom, boom, boom all night long. And I'm like, oh. She said, this morning I found bottles filled with urine on my front lawn. So, anyway, <laughs> that's, that's what Thank I you. witnessed. Else? Thank um, you. Kitty Montemurlo, 18 Woodridge. I'm like right in the backyard of the um, motel. I can hear that, that beating that she heard, the music, it was awful. Uh, I didn't see any of the stuff Gail saw, so I can't speak to it. Other of my neighbors have, one of them, um, well, you know, Chris, was Joanne sent you a letter, and then she got a response from the police department. She saw it all, she said it was a mess and it was horrible. She said her windows were vibrating, the noise was so loud. And another one of my neighbors on Oak Ridge, right around the corner, it, it, it was horrible, just awful. Uh, what concerns me is that if an ambulance had to get into my development or something, they never would have made it. Um, you know, we just had one man run, run away in a, an ambulance, uh, I think it was last night, and um, I don't think they could have made it in there based on what I'm hearing was happening out on Center Street. And this isn't the first time. I mean, it's happened before. What were the times that you recall? I don't know if you had an opportunity to check your clock, your clock uh, when you, you know, that was... Uh, the, you know, the music? The music. Oh, I was hearing it at 3, 3.30. Um, and, and, and I did not call the police because the last time the event happened and we called, it was like, well, we checked it out. The noise isn't loud enough. It's not that loud. I can't imagine anyone being in that building and not thinking that music wasn't loud. Uh, it, it, it's impossible. The, there's a girl that lives behind Gail, and she heard it. Um, yeah, she did. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Pat Walden, front of Five Bailey Road. Um, I'm on the other side of the woods behind the motel, and I also heard the, uh, I didn't hear music, I heard the bass, and it, it's just, Sorry, I just want to pin down the location. On the other side of which hotel? The, uh, on the other side of the woods. She's Raymond. on Raymond. 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 She's Raymond. on Raymond. Divided oh, by Right, right, right. okay. On, as you drive in, you're on the left side. And you go straight in. Off the right. south side. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. And I also heard the uh, vibrations. I didn't hear music, but the vibrations were pretty powerful. And do you recall the times? Uh, you know, I really can't tell you. It was around one-ish, you know, 
that I that I really I, I noticed it earlier and then I noticed it again at that, at that time. Thanks, Pat. Anyone else? Brian Vaughn, 470 in Elmwood. I'm just curious, like if you're in that the police unfortunately can't do anything, but it sounds like it was over capacity. What about the fire marshal? Well, that's something that we're gonna discuss once we got, that's why we're trying to get observations now to get, sort of get the, at least a general understanding of the facts um, and then, you know, so that they, when the officials consider what actions they uh, are available, if any, um, they'll, they'll try and have a good observation. So, uh, you know, what, what people recall. Anyone else? Okay, and uh, Victor, I'm sorry, I can't recall your last name. Antico, A-N-T. I C O. Okay, and you and you're with the, the what's your position? I own the management company. Manage oh you you uh, own the management company that manages the hotel? Correct. And what's the name of the management company again? Antico Management. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's pretty simple. All right. Were you there that evening? I was not. Okay. What's your understanding of what took place? Um, that it was a uh, a private um, a party that they sold tickets to. And they being the the client rented out the space from us, okay. And then they sold tickets, uh, prepaid, so they had an idea of who was coming. And then uh, they worked with the town as far as the licenses and uh, uniformed police officers on uh, that were present in the building that were hired by the um, client. So I think it started at four, and then they went back and forth with the town, and they were up to so at total there was seven police officers hired by the client that were in the building for the entire duration of the party. Do you find, if you know, who is the client? I, I'm just trying to get an understanding of, was um, it like a wedding or? A no, meeting? no, I don't think so. I think it was more like, um, uh, well, I saw the ad, it was, it was supposed to like, you know, the DJ and the hip hop music and things like that. They were trying to create like a, club environment within the uh, I think we got some information on that. Yeah. So just just to be clear from a health department perspective and all of the public <coughs> officials have a different slice of sure. regulations from a health department perspective selling tickets and private party do not go together. The selling of tickets or any sort of advertising um, creates a public event and as you're already aware we have a lot of concerns about um, unlicensed caterers being there providing food to the public okay. as well. So that's just one slice of it. Yep. So, well, I think we want to, I'm trying to get, draw out as many facts as we can sure. now, and then we get, kind of get into the analysis, I think sure. we get to the public officials, but um, although before, you know, I'll certainly open up the questions if any, anyone here has questions for people that have spoken, <laughs> but um, I'm still trying to pin down who the client was. I mean, was it? Chris, I think you got it? With that. Um, the gentleman who hosted the party owns several cell phone companies, and these are his clients that he invited. Whether or not tickets were sold, I can't tell you. All I know is, is that he invited, uh, told me that he invited about 800 people. Now, the ballroom has a capacity of 889 people, just the ballroom. Um, I know that the party um, rolled over into the front foyer, um, we don't have a, a occupancy um, sign for the front four years, so I don't know what the occupancy of that four year is. Um, but I also was told, I think the police department mentioned how many parking spaces there are on the property. So, right. so excuse my ignorance if I don't understand how, when you say cell phone company, you mean like a oh, provider? Yeah. Like, a, like Verizon or AT&T yeah, he, he, or people he, that sell cell local, phones? Yeah. He sells them. He yeah. sells cell phones. He, sells them. Right. He, he owns a private company, and it, and it may be an ATT or, or a Verizon um, branch, but that's what he does. He owns several of these, and these are clients that he invited. Okay. I have their website if you want to buy and look at the pictures. Right. They're out of Hartford. They have a couple, of, on a couple of storefronts, oh. and they push it all out of there. So they sell cell phones. That's their business. Right. This is a profit-making venture that he's involved in. Oh. He sells tickets, $20, $25 a piece, and holds, hires a couple of DJs. I think these guys were known in, in the hip-hop culture on the, from the radio station 93.7, I believe. 
and so they had a brand name to go along with it, and it drew in all of these people from all over the place. What does the 25 bucks get you? Admission uh, only? Get you in. I don't Free know what place. else it gets you. Well, food, alcohol, I mean, what, do you, what's included with that? That's, I'm just curious. They advertise. If you go on the website, the tickets were advertised free drinks. I wanted to know if the hotel has a liquor license, right. mm -hmm. a valid liquor license. Because I was on the uh, liquor control uh, website, and any hotel liquor license for that location is expired or revoked. So they're selling alcohol. I think we need to know if they have a license. Certainly, I'll give my questions to ask. All right, so uh, again, I'm trying. So for twenty-five dollars, you got admission to this thing. They advertise free drinks, drinks food. Is there a caterer? There was this past Saturday night who said they had a license in New Haven, and we didn't find out about the details until Friday. In um, the, the caterer assured our director of food services that they had a license in New Haven, and that was not true. So the hotel is really putting their their very limited food license at extreme risk by doing this. Seems like an awful lot for $25. I'm coming in two weddings right now. I don't know how you get food, <laughs> drinks, and yeah. for 25 I think bucks. there was a VIP area, too, if I remember, and that was the word we're getting is $300 to get in here. Do you guys know anything about that? I think you're right. Yeah, there's 20, 18, something like that, tables they sold for 300 Right, so there's more income being generated there. And I, if I can just interrupt, if you look at the pictures on the website, a lot of the uh, men standing around had bottles of booze in their hands. Mm -hmm. so there there was pictures of this event? I yes. Right. Okay. They're, yeah. They're out there. They got tons well, of pictures. She has some right there. If you want to see them, I'll give them to you. You might be a little shocked. But, but they had bottles of booze in their hands, so it's not just that they were serving them, you know, martinis or something. They advertise it as the all black experience on the website. So Put on my bed, right? I have it. Yeah. You have it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you have it, Mr. Ferber? What's that? The website? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. This is their flyer. Okay. I'll give you a copy of that before we leave. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh yeah, so this Nays wireless. Right. Oh, this must be the organizer. And is that place even safe? Do they have sprinkler systems? Fire alarms, smoke alarms. It, it does have a fire alarm system, but the building did not require sprinklers when it was built, so I can't enforce that. Okay. Is there anyone else, uh, members of the public or representatives of the hotel or anyone else that had some observations about what took place there um, or that you want to make sure that we're aware of? I have a question yeah. just from an informational standpoint. It's 10 o'clock generally can perceived by the police department as the time when loud noise is supposed to cease. The problem is there's no teeth in these types of observations. When you have a venue like this, what is too loud, what is not too loud? If you live next to the XL Center in Hartford, what is too loud, what's not too loud? And that's basically what brings us all here. So, uh, Bill, I just want to make sure I understood your question is, is there a, is, is 10 when, when I was on the police the department, about 10 o'clock yeah. was considered about be about the normal time where if Chris Kerber called and said, Bill Russo's having a party, it's too loud, the police would show up, they'd say, go. Do you know if that was based on a local ordinance or a, a, a criminal statute or? No, I just, just believe it was a customary standard 
enforced by the local police department. And to answer your question, Lieutenant, if I call and make a complaint, don't we have a disturbance of the peace? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, first of all, a little history. We developed the Woodridge community, uh, which probably added a $10 million, $10 million to the grand list of the town of Windsor Lodge, with full intent that we abutted a hotel. There's no question about that. I think what's important here is when that hotel was built as a Howard Johnson's, it was built as a Howard Johnson's Motor Lodge and Conference Center, period. It's not a venue for rave concerts and all black experience parties to go till four in the morning. I think the hotel is operating way beyond what was intended for the approval what was granted in 1973. And I think that's where the teeth have to come in as to what the approval was and what is being operated as today. I mean, my son drove up that road that night, came over the bridge. Cars were parked both ways. There was a single lane to get down Center Street. That's not what this was in, intended to be. I've been to hotels. I've been to parties at that hotel. I've rented that hotel for parties. Never did I ever see anything to this capacity. So I don't think anybody's objecting to a hotel or a conference center. What it's being used for is neither. Does anyone here have any questions for anyone that's spoken in the audience before we? I, I, um, Victor, are you the responsible party for people can't plan all of these events without getting you to sign off on them from within the hotel? Both of us. Okay. So I just wanted to know who that was. Oh, when you say both of us, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce um, Alyssa. She's the front office manager at the hotel. She was at the event. Alyssa with an A or Melissa with an M? I didn't Alyssa with an A. Alyssa sorry. with an A. Yeah. Sorry, the person speaking. Yeah. We also, what, what, what um, obviously she was here the whole time, and we didn't get, we would have responded to a call from any of the residents that called, they called the hotel and said that they, no, you're shaking your head. You didn't call? I didn't call this time. I called the last time. Okay. And complained. They hung up on me. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? Last month. The last the, the last event that you had. Okay. And they hung up. And I did call your hotel yesterday, and maybe it was you I spoke to, and asked uh, what your capacity was there, and if you had a liquor license. And I was told yes. So I'm assuming if they don't have a liquor license, that's reason enough to shut them down. Well, yeah, we're we'll just trying to hold off on the conclusion, and just trying to get collect the fact now. But I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. the big. I was just saying that night, and I asked if we got any calls about the noise, right. and the answer was no, we did not. Okay. Anyone else up here? Questions for people? All right, so at this point, uh, we'll conclude sort of that, that portion of it. I'm going to turn the meeting over to the, the officials. You know, we've, everyone has their different role when it comes to enforcement. There's, different, there's, all, there's uh, zoning laws that may be you know, uh, involved here, criminal laws that may be involved here health regulations that may be involved, fire regulations. So assembling the team, uh, I thought, was the, 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 the best way to go. And uh, now that they have a little more information, um, you know, I'm going to turn it, give them the opportunity to, to talk. Yeah, go ahead. Before you close, I, I really want to suggest that we come up with an ordinance for the town for noise travel or noise pollution or noise control nuisance that has either decibel <coughs> ratings by time, yeah. different areas, so that the police have something to go with. Yeah, right. Because if, if they recall, don't have it, you, what, how are seven or six police going to deal with a thousand people? If you recall, when the last time we revised the Blight Ordinance, we expanded it and we had proposed language that included uh, noise, unreasonable noise section of it. Correct. As well as new, just general nuisance section. So, Blight and unreasonable noise were subsets of the general, you know, generalized definition of nuisance. And during the process of that, the unreasonable noise um, portion of it came out of the proposal at the request of the police commission, who felt that uh, the way it was drafted would lead to enforcement, enforceability issues. So 
rather, if, if, so as not to stop the whole process, we carved that out at that point. But we didn't, you know, make a conclusion that we would never revisit it. So I think it's a let's important, revisit it. Please. Yeah, I think it's an important suggestion and something that we really need to take a look at. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious, were they serving alcohol, or were people allowed to bring their own alcohol? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I only know what I've heard. These, it sounds like maybe a little bit of both. People are bringing their own alcohol and drinking out of bottles. Yeah, based on the observations, I'm, or based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like there might have been a, both. Right. Uh, that? Yeah. yeah, new permission? I know with, with the VIP, they received a bottle. Oh, so Probably. those who bought a VIP ticket may have been served alcohol. Yeah. Just the, the regular $25 ticket. Could maybe even bring your own. Maybe, yeah, like a drink ticket. I'm not sure of those details. I, I, I think they withheld a lot of information from us, and they, and they, I think they really took advantage of, the, of us. Um, so we, you know, because of that, we're obviously never going to host another one of these yeah. events like that. Do you have like a file that was open for this event that maybe you could copy and share with us? You know, um, you know, as to what 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 they did. Yeah, I could. I don't know how to bring it with me. But no, yeah, we get a chance. You yeah. can just email me, and I'll share with you whatever okay. whatever we have. It might be helpful to see what they did communicate. In right. Yeah. And, and, and then you get to, then you know, get to see yeah. a little bit clearer how they did withhold some information. Yeah. And, and <coughs> took advantage of the situation. Because okay. I also managed the, the Crown Plaza in Enfield for a while, and uh, um, I had that for about five years, and we had similar situations where someone would come in under the auspice of A, B, and C. And then they rent out a large ballroom, and in fact, it turned into something completely else, something completely different. So they were, they they prey upon either hotels under renovation or hotels that are new and you know, something like that. So th these these sort of events go from location to location, looking for large capacity rooms that are either under construction or under under managed or situations like that. So this is a situation that's one time. That they, they burned us and they're not going to burn us again. Not this type of thing. So I guess because I'm, I'm just telling you. I sit here, I don't know what our authority is, right. and, and that's what the government's to determine. But uh, what I'm hearing, and I'm not, and I'm not asking or dictating this to you. Sure. But I'm hearing you voluntarily say that uh, if it's up to you, you would not no. host another event such as this. No. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Appreciate not to this group. Not to this group. Not to this group. You're saying. They did last month. They did New Year's Eve. Well, I, was it the same group? Was it a different group? I, 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 you know, I don't yes. Know. Different group? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's the same idea. It's a different group. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Yes, I'd just like to say one more thing. You, you asked if we had any statutory authority. Statutory authority rests in the statute, breach of peace, and disorderly conduct. It's the responsibility of the police officer responding to the call to make that determination whether the complaint is valid. Is that not correct, Lieutenant Turner? You want me to give my take on all this? Uh, Just, what I well, saw that that, that's case. my yeah, statement. Yeah, 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 why why right don't you try and keep it to what your yes. observations were as sure. opposed to what your conclusions are? So I was involved in this from the beginning. Uh, we actually found out about this by accident. We were not notified by any entity at all involved in this. Um, we found out just by someone on the internet happened to see it, and uh, the catchword was Windsor Locks, and next thing you know, we found out that this major event was going to take place with this amount of people. Uh, we went, this was on Friday. The event was on Saturday into Sunday. So we didn't have really any time to do anything, but we tried. Uh, we went right down there. I was down there probably two or three times. I spoke with Alyssa a couple times. I spoke with the promoter. Uh, he eventually showed up from uh, out of state and I happened to catch both the uh, deputy fire chief and Mark here also and uh, public health we were all converged at the same time and we had a sidebar conference as well trying to see if everything lines up right in our respective responsibilities uh, we were way behind the eight ball um, I also spoke with liquor commission prior to going down there when I found out this was going on just to make sure I knew what I needed to know and it's a Friday, state agency. They weren't very responsive. Um, not their fault, it just, it is what it is on a short notice. 
they're not going to put a team of five guys and, and hit a place on short notice like that for a liquor violation. What they usually do, the crime is committed, and then we refer them to the liquor commission, which is what will happen here. Um, so we did not have liquor commission support uh, in this operation. Now we had to find out what are we going to do with 800 plus people at a confirmed sold out venue. Uh, we had our conferences, everyone felt the venue, uh, the st structurally, the venue could go on, uh, on Mark's side of things. Uh, on the fire side, the requirements were met that the place could remain open and usable. And you've already heard public health's uh, position earlier that it's a private event, you know, not unlike a wedding or something like that. No, it is a public event. They, 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 they sell no, tickets. Exactly. If, they if sell it's tickets. advertised or they sell tickets, it's considered a public event and there are regulations right. going on. Right. On Friday That's at right. the time, yeah. we didn't know this. Right. right. Like I said, I was I was told this was by invitation, yeah, we don't not need by to ticket. have so to hash it all out here. Yeah. No, let's, uh, Paul's but, giving his observation. Lieutenant Kerniak is giving his observations. So let's let him continue. So uh, we real we went down there. We had a couple conferences with the parties involved, uh, trying to figure out what we were going to do. Then we also confirmed they have no police protection whatsoever scheduled for this event. We knew that 800 people is going to be a problem rounded off to a thousand people with the spillover with VIP, whatever. Uh, so we knew that was going to be an issue. So after talking with the promoter directly, he hired on a private duty side of things, he hired a total of seven police officers and then myself as well for the detail. 